In the last video, I discussed four different strategies to deal with branches, and now I'm going to focus on this compiler-based approach here, which essentially says that I'm going to define an architecture where the instruction after the branch is always fetched and executed, right? So this branch, let's say it's an if-then-else statement, where if a condition is met, it jumps to the else part, and if that condition is not met, it executes the then part. And what I'm going to do is the instruction after the branch is always fetched and executed, right? And this basically says that it takes me two cycles to figure out which way the branch is going to go. So it's only by the third cycle that I can start fetching instructions correctly from the then part or the else part. So in the meantime, in cycle two, the instruction right after the branch is going to be fetched and executed no matter what. And regardless of which way the branch goes, I'm not going to squash that instruction. That is going to be allowed to flow through the pipeline, finish its execution, and write a result into the register file. So now it's up to the compiler to find something useful to put into that branch delay slot, right? And if the compiler can find something useful, then useful work gets done in that cycle. And so I don't lose a cycle while I'm figuring out which way a branch is going to go. Okay, so how do I fill that branch delay slot? I'm showing you a couple of examples on the left, but let's, let's just kind of draw it out. So here's a branch it can go this way or it can go this way. All right, and I'm trying to put something useful in over here. The number one option for me is to look for an instruction before the branch that I can move in over here, right? Because regardless of which way the branch is going to go, the instructions before the branch do have to get executed every single time, right? And so if one of those instructions can be moved in, then I'm always doing something useful in the cycle after the branch. I'm just delaying the execution of this early instruction over here. Now, it's not always possible to move something from before the branch into the delay slot. Over here, I'm showing you an example where you can actually move something, and you'll see that this instruction writes something into S1, and this branch is reading S2. So there's really no data dependence between these two instructions. If you reorder these two instructions, you still end up with a program that has exactly the same result. Okay, so it is safe to move this instruction into the delay slot. But if this instruction had been writing into S2, you'll see that the branch depends on this add instruction. Depending on whatever that add, the add instruction produces and puts into S2, the branch is going to go one way or the other, right? So if you move this into the branch delay slot, you would be reordering these two instructions. You would be messing with the data dependence. And the branch ends up taking, making a decision before the correct value has even been produced into S2, right? So if there's a data dependence between the instructions over here and the branch, then those instructions cannot be moved into the branch delay slot. So in certain programs, the compiler may end up analyzing the instructions before the branch, and it may decide that because of these data dependencies, nothing before the branch can be moved into the branch delay slot. So the compiler then has to look at option B and C. Right, what are those options? Let's look at instructions after the branch. Let's look at the instructions from, let's say, the taken side. Right, so let's say this is the taken side. Let's say this is the not taken side. So the compiler may analyze these instructions and say that, well, here's an instruction that I can move into the branch delay slot. And every time the branch is taken, I'm essentially prefetching the execution of that instruction, right? Instead of deciding to go down this path and then fetching this instruction, Let's bring it over here and execute it early, right? And so every time the branch gets taken, I end up doing something useful in this branch delay slot. And if the branch ends up being not taken, then this, this cycle is essentially a wasted cycle because I've executed an instruction that I really should not have, okay? But because the underlying hardware is going to guarantee execution of this instruction, we have to make sure that this instruction C does not have any damaging effects. That is, it does not overwrite some register value that is going to be useful along this path over here. Okay, so if I think that the branch is typically going to be taken, right? So let's say that, I, that the compiler has some intelligence and is able to figure out that I go along the taken part 80% of the time and go along the not taken path 20% of the time. So in that case, the compiler says that an instruction over here, if I can move it up here, it's going to be useful 80% of the time. And the other 20% of the time, I have to make sure that it does not violate correctness, right? It's not going to be a useful cycle for sure. I've essentially wasted that cycle, but I need to make sure that this instruction as it executes does not do anything wrong. 
Okay, so that's why this is option B or C because you know it's useful some of the times and the rest of the time it's not. Okay, and again I have to be careful to make sure that I don't pick an instruction that's going to overwrite a useful value, right? Because if I choose not if I choose to go along this side, I've essentially brought in an instruction over here and that's going to write into some register value. So I have to make sure that it only writes into a dead register value. So I'm showing an example here where if a certain condition is met, I'm jumping to this this set of instructions. And the first instruction from here is placed into the branch delay slot. So this is my original code. This is my new piece of code. And after the branch, I have put in that, that subtract instruction, right? So every time the branch is taken, I've ended up doing something useful in the branch delay slot. And if I end up going the other way, then I've ended up writing something into T4. And hopefully T4 is not a value that, that I care about going along this other path. If all the instructions over here are overwriting useful register values, then again, I'm not going to be able to move any instruction from here into the branch delay slot. Then I look at option B, I try to find something useful to put in from there into the branch delay slot. Again, if every instruction there is overwriting some useful register value, then I'm unable to move anything into the branch delay slot. So if option A, B, and C, all of them fail, then I end up putting a no op over here, which means that I just couldn't find anything to do. But since I have to fetch and execute something, let's just execute a no op instruction, which is something that does nothing as it goes through the pipeline. Okay, so if option A works out, then the branch delay slot is always useful. So, an, so a hundred instruction program with 20 branches is going to take 100 cycles to finish. If I use something from option C in the branch delay slot, then I have 100 instructions. I have 20 branches over there. 80% of the time I'm doing something useful. 20% of the time I'm doing something not useful. So that means there are four branches over here where I end up wasting a cycle. So I take 104 cycles to finish if something from option B works out. If I have to resort to option C, then I have 100 instructions, 20 branches, 20% of the time I'm doing something useful, 80% of the time I'm doing something not useful. So that's 16 branches where I waste a cycle. And so that takes 116 cycles. So depending on how successful the compiler is, I'm either going to take 100 cycles, 104 cycles, 116 cycles. And if none of these options work out, then I'm executing a no op after every branch and that's going to take 120 cycles, right? So the quality of the code and the compiler will, uh, will ultimately decide how many cycles I'm penalized for that particular branch.